it's a year today. Julian Milo Show is coming your way on Pass. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today is August 25th, 2021. Welcome to the Julie and Milo Show. My name is Julie. I'm coming to you from Orange County, California. My dear friend, Milo. Milo, could you please say hello? Hey, how are you guys doing? It's Milo from Nashville, Tennessee. Hi, Milo. Thank you for coming on today. Uh, not that you are coming on, it's just that we get to start the show every single day. And uh, it's such a blessing for both of us to be here. Uh, it's because of on passive and uh, we get to connect with founders across the world, learn their story from the first hand. I'm so proud to do this with you, Milo. And this has been over eight months that we do this. We get to sit down and talk with 150 founders so far. So today, Milo, we do have a guest in the holding room. Uh, we get to know her a little bit. She's one of the presenter in our presenter series, but today we actually get to hear her story. So Milo, if you could please uh, introduce our guest. And it's Josie Dixie. Josie, come on down and talk to us. There she is. Good to have you on the show, Josie. So good to have you on the show. Thank hey, you. Hey, Josie. So good to Hi. see you. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, Josie, we like to talk to the founders and we like to get to know them a little bit better. You know, as who is Josie? Where was Josie born? How about her parents? How about her children? Her siblings, uh, take about two, three minutes and tell us about it. Okay. Um, I was uh, born in Holland in, uh, in 1951. We immigrated to Canada. Um, my, since my parents have passed, I have uh, two, two, uh, two grown up children, boys, and uh, they're married, and I have four grandchildren. Yay. Yeah. And I have a sister who is older than myself. Wow, and, Josie, yes. go ahead. Do you have more? Well, I just wanted to say we uh, we immigrated to Canada, moved in on, uh, lived in Ontario, and um, yeah, that's about it. You know. <laughs> You know, Josie, I come to learn about you and get to know you a little bit and see how how brave and how fun you are. What a great color on you, by the way. Thank you. Know you know what? I've actually read on your bio that you steer the tractor when you were six and then you were driving one when you were eight years old. Tell us a little bit about that. That sounds really fun. It was a lot of fun. I was, I really liked uh, I really like the farm. Um, my Christian name is Berendina Johanna, but I was, of course, I was supposed to be a boy. <laughs> and uh, so I was going to be named after my father, which was Jonathan, okay, in English. And so they changed it to Johanna and put the Berendina in front of it. And dad said, okay, we'll call you Josie. So that's what happened. And uh, so at six years old, like we had a hundred acre farm, doesn't sound like much, but back in the fifties, that was a pretty big, pretty big farm in Ontario. And uh, so anyhow, um, we had a, a, the laneway through the farm ended up on the uh, other concession road. And uh, so I'd walk down and, and uh, I'd jump on the tractor and I'd be steering it, you know, and uh when we came to Canada, Albert came with us, who helped my parents during the during the war, and he wanted to come too. So I was sitting on his lap steering, <laughs> and uh, then at the age of eight, uh, I uh, I was tall enough. I was tall for my age. As long as I could reach the pedals, I did fine. So I started. Uh, I was shown how to rake the hay and then uh later on uh when it was dry i would help bale it so i was driving the tractor all the time in the summertime and wow. then in the spring i would get a, a calf i wouldn't get paid you know but i would get a calf and then uh 
I would have to raise it a bit and then it will go to the sale barn and whatever money uh, came from that calf was given to me for being on the farm. So it was great. You know, I enjoyed it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and 100 acres is a lot of land. We used to have a 100 acre farm uh, down in Texas when I was a small child. Uh, you know, so I remember that. And, but I read something here that uh, caught my attention. It says that you went fishing at yeah. night. Yeah. <laughs> and what you did was illegal. Tell us about it. Well, well the only time the, these fish were called suckers. And they had a lot of scale on them, okay? But the only time that they were out would be at night. And so we had a creek running through our farm. So we'd go to the bridge, which was close to the, which was on the highway, actually. And uh, then with the flashlights, you know, the flashlights, and then we'd have a spear and we'd grab uh hit them with the spear right and catch them with the spear i should say uh yeah i got a picture of me with me holding this sucker he's about two feet long <laughs> i used wow. to do the, it's funny because i used to do the same thing we call them carps but it's the same okay. thing uh, yeah. it's yeah. got the real heavy scales on it yes and yes. Uh, yeah we would we would take bow and arrows too and shoot them you know uh, it was fun <laughs> we, we had yeah. a fun time with it Go yeah, ahead. and they, they like to and they like to be around the rocks, you know. Yep. And so you had, and it was fast flowing there, so it was great for them. So yeah, we caught, uh, <laughs> and of course you weren't allowed to do that. That was illegal. But uh, at eleven o'clock at night, who was who was going to know? <laughs> That's exactly right. It was fun. That is so fun, right? That is so fun. Yeah. So Josie. I, I read something in your bio and it said that you, you had your first job when you were 15 <laughs> and the customer came in and asked for a bastard file, file and then you turned red. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, he came in, he was a farmer, okay? And he had to sharpen some blades on something or other, okay? And, and uh, he said he wanted, um, I said to him, can I help you? And the boss was in the back. And I, I, I said, can I help you? And he said, yeah. I said, I'm looking for a bastard file. And I looked at him and he looked at me, but no smile on his face, you know. And I went beat red and I go, what the heck? So I, I said, just a minute. And I went and I got the boss and I said, what's a bastard file? <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, now I know. And then, but there is such a thing as a bastard file. And the file is about this long, and it's um, it's a it's a, not as fine as other files, but it was a little more coarser, and it sharpened the blades a lot faster. So, yeah. So that was that lesson. <laughs> wow, I never heard of it. I know there's some files, but you know, interesting. So where do you go get the bastard file? So then I, I, you know, I went and I said, okay, can you point it out to me? I said, I'm sorry. I don't know which, which is which here. He says, oh, that's okay. He says, it's that one right now. I said, okay. And then I looked at it and I looked at the others and I go, okay. So it's not as coarse as the other files were. So you know, yeah, it was for sharpening blades. You know what and I, I mean, thought you would. Blades, like, you know, on, on, uh, uh on a plow or something like that that's what it was for so, you know what i thought she was talking about josie i thought she was talking about a file like in a file cabinet <laughs> <laughs> until you said you know until you said you're sharp and i'm like i'm like what oh now i get it it was actually a file that you filed yeah, yeah. like well you way. see the the hardware store was for uh for the farmers you sure. know uh, and it was the old fashioned one where uh, it, you walked in, it was all wooden floor, you know, it was, uh, and, and the counter was handmade and all the little cubicles had had uh, all different size nuts and all different size bolts. And then when, and then when it came to uh, inventory, uh, he said, well, just guess. I said, I'm not guessing. Oh, just guess, he goes. And I said, okay. So I looked in and I go, well, that might be 50, but it might be 20. <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> but anyhow, he said, ah, oh, never mind, I'll do them. <laughs> you do the big stuff. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So uh, let's move on to your hobbies. You enjoy playing pool. You like yeah. walking dogs. You love to cook and bake. What's your favorite thing to cook? Yeah. What kind of I like to cook a, um, I guess, a, a nice beef stew. Lots of vegetables, lots of potatoes, uh, garlic, salt, pepper, uh, a little um, mm, a little marjoram in it, and uh, just put it in the pot and just put it on low and forget about it. <laughs> oh, cool. That's and good. lots of meat and lots sent? of beef you know um, yeah i love stew i love stew uh so it looks like you like to read suspense stories you read your bible uh, yeah. you love the window shop with friends and and you found god about three years ago yeah yeah i really did he came to me well it was really strange i i i, I got really upset one day and there was um a gentleman here, he, he delivered a pizza for me, and, and I said, well, I said, God bless you. And uh, he said, do you believe in God? I said, yeah, I believe in God. And I said, I've been doing some reading and all this and that. And he said, uh, do you believe in a higher plane? And I said, like the universe? I said, well, the universe is God as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, you know. And so his wife came and she did a reading for me with cards and um yeah i really discovered that god uh, i was so upset i said i don't know what i don't know what god wants for me i know he wants something for me but i don't know what it is and when i was younger i used to have premonitions and these premonitions would come true and some of them were pretty bad that i i couldn't sleep at night you know i was afraid it would I would dream and dream something else, you know. So uh, anyhow, uh, so they left and I sat down and I was sitting quietly with the dogs and I just sat there and I said, okay, God, I'm here. Now I know what to do. And uh, I said, I need help doing it. And uh, then I was sitting on the couch and I was petting um, my other dog, Charlie and um and i had the camera and it was a nice picture of us and i put the camera down because his head was over looking at the camera and i was too and all of a sudden he stopped just as i was he turned just as i was hitting the flash and i said why did you do that you know and uh, so anyway he um i said oh my you know I looked and I said, what's in my glasses? Everything. So I brought it up and there's a picture of uh, Mary, Mother Mary. And she's holding a picture of Jesus. And I have, and that's how I found God. Wow. You know? It just totally, totally amazed me. And then I found out I could listen to my dogs and I knew what they were saying. And I could tell them something without talking. I would just say it in my mind. And then they'd both look at me, you know. And they, the, the little one, the other one, uh, Charlie, knows, knows exactly what I'm thinking and when I'm thinking it. It's, it's amazing. We are so connected. Wow. And uh, there was a, a lady that had um, bought a dog and it, it came from a hot country. And anyhow, it was um, it was December, so it was cold. And uh, I had a vision and uh, I phoned her and I said, do you live in a white house, two story house? Yes. I said, do you have a um large veranda on the front yes i says as you're go driving into your driveway i said is there a red barn on the left side and she said yes she said who is this <laughs> so we got to be friends and i found the dog for it 
Wow. That's yeah. Awesome. And uh, yeah, I, I did. And I was so happy. So uh, yeah, that was that. <laughs> wow. Josie, that's very interesting of what you're sharing right now. <laughs> I noticed in your bio that you became a centennial princess in 1967. Yeah. Uh, take a little time and tell us about that. Well, um, they were, they advertised for a princess and uh, one of our uh, family friends, their son came up to me and he said, um, why don't you enter? And he said, uh, it's at the arena. The arena was an outdoor rink. <laughs> and he said, we'll, uh, you know, and they'll ask questions and then we'll see what, where you are. I said, okay, fine. So there were three of us. There were five of us, but three of us were picked. And uh, then we had to go skate around and uh, show off our skills, which I I skate, that's it. <laughs> you know, I do nothing fancy. And uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, I got picked as the princess. And anytime there was any activity going on, um, the, the, the queen and the princesses had to be there. It was it was awesome. I I really enjoyed it. You know, it was it was fun, and that that's the main thing. You know. Well, you know what, Josie? It seems like you've have had a really really fun life, and it's going to be more fun because of on passive. I like to go into the on passive uh, topic. Um, yes. We all getting together. We all connected because of on passive. So tell me, when did you join on passive? How has it been like for you? And um, what make you take the actions to join on passive? Well, you know, uh, I was doing something else, okay? And uh, it was going to be also a big thing, but it was uh, MLM and you had to keep up with the, your position. You had to buy so much every month of a product. So uh, I did that. And then I said, but uh, nothing is happening here. And people that I do get, they're ordering the stuff online. And it doesn't seem like I'm getting anything out of this. And uh, so the one lady, she was also doing that. And she got a hold of me and she said, you know, she said, I joined, um, I joined GoFounders. I said, okay. I said, so what is GoFounder? So she explained it to me. And uh, so I said, oh, that sounds interesting. Okay. I never researched it. It was my gut feeling. My gut said, this is good. And, uh, it, and also, God had told me that I wasn't going to be in this situation for long. And something was going to come up and I should take it. I did. And then I researched it. And I just sat there and I was, I, my mouth was open and I go, this is absolutely amazing, astounding. It is gigantic. It's going to be gigantic. And, and when the computers came out, uh, I was unemployed and I was at the un um, uh, unemployment office, at the employment office. And I was there and this lady said, oh, you're going to find, you have to come to this meeting because it's the information highway. And I go, what is she talking about? And I go, uh, by then. And so anyhow, I didn't get a job, but anyhow, I ended up working at a, at a truck stop. And I go, well, maybe this is what she meant by it, you know, so many truckers and all this and that. So I never, by then when I read about on passive and, and, and the high tech uh, industry, this industry, it was just going to, I just thought this, this one is going to be the top, the top billion, billion, million, trillion, uh, gigantic, majestic uh, thing to get into and then I said you know 
I, I'm glad I did. I was so happy that I did, and I thank God. And and uh, I don't regret it one bit. Yeah, we don't. I mean, everything has to be done right. And I don't. I think Ash is, is our CEO is the most compassionate, most outstanding, understanding, humanitarian in the world. And Absolutely. if he doesn't get and if he doesn't get an award for this, then there's something wrong with this country, all the countries, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. Josie, that is great. I love your heart and stuff. Uh, you know, and, and we say on the show, you know, Ash, Ash has made a statement or quoted. He says, I might not be able to change the world, but I can change someone's world. Yeah. And, you know, we all think that way, and Own Passive is going to change the world one person at a time, starting with Ash Maparo. So we yeah. realized when we got in, you know, we might have been looking for residual income. We might have been looking for a way to make extra money. But then it becomes a bigger thing to us. Our heart and our mind picks up the passion of Ash, picks up the, the passion of, hey, this is bigger than what we think it's about humanity. What are we gonna do for it? So I'd like to ask you a two part question. Number one is what are you gonna do with your apples for your family, your immediate family and, and yourself that's gonna make a difference in your life? And number two, then what are you gonna do with all those extra apples? Cause we know that you can't use all the apples. What are you gonna do with those extra apples and how are you gonna help and what are you gonna do with it? Well, I'm going to leave a legacy for my kids, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for sure. Uh, I've only signed up myself and I'm going to see from there. And uh, uh, I'm sure I will be making enough for the, the, the children and the, and the grandchildren, you know. Sure. And uh, um, <laughs> yes, you know, everybody wants to have it now. But I don't look at it that way. I'm I I think like Ash. Let's make the let's make the product perfect before we give it to the founders or to uh, the world, and that's how I see it. But uh, what am I going to do with the extra? Well, let me tell you. I want I want to buy a house, and I want to buy a house out in the country, and I want about 100 acres. And on that 100 acres, I'm going to rescue horses that are going to the slaughterhouse. And what I want to do with that is I want to buy a ring. I want to build a ring and a barn. Hopefully, there'll be a barn when I buy the house. And just renovate, have enough money to renovate the whole thing and just have these horses and um, then what I want to do is I want to help the needy. I want to help the children and the adult children because we know when there's a uh, when there's a mental illness or or they uh, were born different than the rest of us that when they become adults they're still children in their mind. So how nice wouldn't it be? If I had volunteers and oh, we and set up a place where they could ride these horses and not charge uh, an arm and a leg for an hour of riding, you know what I'm saying? Charge a, something decent that that the parents can say, "Oh, well, I can afford this," instead of sending them to a place where it's going to cost you know, $100 an hour or whatever. No, 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 no. Let's do it that the, what the parents can afford. And I don't care if the parents are poor, if they're rich or whatever, or in between. I want it to be the same price for everybody. And that way, so what? It get, uh, I'm, I'm saving these horses. And plus, not only that, but maybe I can sell these horses to these people and they take it home with them. Or they know somebody that wants a horse and they come and take a look and see what this horse does. That's that's what I would like to do. Because there's too many. And also, 
I want to take money and I want to, I think, you know, there is no, it's in some of the countries, there is no health care. And if they go into the hospital, they are not released until, uh, until they pay what is owed to the hospital. So they can't get out until they pay. And, and it's thousands and thousands of dollars in their money, okay? It's thousands of, and I'd like to, I'd like to change that. I would really like to see healthcare there where in, in those countries where somebody can go in and say, I don't feel good, you know, or, or I'm taking a heart attack and, you know, that boom, you don't have to pay for, for getting your blood pressure taken. You don't have to pay for having your heart monitored all the time. Uh, you don't have to pay for an operation. You don't have to pay for whatever. You don't have to pay for the meds. That is is how I would like to, I would like to do that. Plus, make sure that in the far out reaches of those cities and countries, in those countries, that there is water, sanitation of some sort, and enough food for them all. Let let them. Yeah let them be able to 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 do a little farming whether it's three or four goats they'd have milk right that that's how i see it that's i i i guess i i'm still an old fashioned girl and i i want to help people i and i think this this mega mega business is going to do that for me absolutely it is and uh, the beautiful part of it is that we are not into, at the beginning, we are in for the money, right? But right now, we're like, we already knew how much money do we need? Only a little bit. That's already take care of us and our family. And at the <laughs> end of it, we're here to change um, other people's lives. Thank you, Josie, so much for being here with us. It's been a fun conversation um, and getting to know you and, um, you know, I know you are a presenter for the Julie and Milo show, but truly today is when we actually t know a little bit more about Josie. Uh, any last words? Uh, just keep the faith and all will come true. Absolutely. Any last word from you, Milo? Yeah, Julie, uh, Julie, I Enjoyed having uh, Josie on so much and, and learning more about her, like you said, and uh, love what you're doing, love your passion, just keep up the work and you're in it and you're going to win. Absolutely. Thank you, Josie, for being here with us. There you have it, everyone, is Josie Deekshik. Uh, she's here with us. She's telling her story. She's passionate about it. I know I didn't say your is Deekshik, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I just remember what you said earlier but anyway <laughs> everyone uh, we hear we enjoy each other's company uh, we get to be who we are in our passive and that's the biggest part um, I, I, I hope I do hope that when you listen to the story the conversations that you have that we have you'll get back to the person who share on passive with you you get back with the person and you said i want to be part of that that what the what those three are talking about just come and join us you'll come you learn you'll explore more you get to know more people and that's the best place to be thank you so much for watching the julianne milo show please go to julianmilo.com subscribe to our channel we have over 620 videos that we've already made we interview 150 over 150 founders we actually have the daily on passive inspirations that Milo's uh, brother was doing. We also have um, presentations that you actually can use. It's only under 15 minutes. And Josie is one of our presenter. Go to the julianmilo.com and uh, subscribe to the channel, share the information, because when you are in it, you are absolutely going to win it. Go ahead, Milo. We have Celestine, too, uh, reading the poem every, uh, once a week. So look for that. Absolutely. Too. That's good. She does a nice job. 
Absolutely, yes. Uh, so what happened is that Curtis wrote the poem and my daughter Celestine um, audio recorded. So check those out. Beautiful inspirations that we get to hear every day. Uh, also, go to onpassive.com for more information. Thank you so much for watching the Julia and Milo show. I like you to go out there and take care of yourself and take care of other. Good night from Orange County, California. Good night. Good night from Nashville.